where, where does it get programmed? Does it get Wednesday night? Because the, there was John Doe, there was Fastlane, and there was Firefly with the new three big shows for Fox that year. John Doe delivered a great pilot, as, as did McGee's directed Fastlane. And so they got the plum spots. They got the uh, Friday nights at 8 and 9. I mean, well, they got Wednesday at 8 and 9. And we ended up Friday because they, they weren't sure where to, where to put us because they had this long episode. So we got kind of caught behind the eight ball. But I think Serenity is a terrific episode if you watch it now. The, the finished product, I don't even think the executives ended up seeing the finished product. You know, they, had seen, they saw the rough cut and went, ah, horses. That's, that's, <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. And a girl in a box. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, I actually, uh, I also love Firefly and uh, Jim and his dad. But uh, I think my favorite thing that you've done is probably uh, Superman, Superman Doomsday. Now, <laughs> I, have, I have some issues with the, with the full product itself, but I think your voice work is, uh, is just astounding in it. I just want to know how you approached the whole clone part of it because I thought that was the best, the best thing. Mm -hmm. yes, the Superman clone. Yeah, it was difficult to portray that guy just with the voice because he has to be such a straight shooter. And I had there was some stumbling blocks in the in the, in the studio with the uh, with the directors and the producers. Was, you know, where's his edge? Well, he doesn't have an edge. He's just playing straight forward and see see where it goes. So I, I don't have too much invested in that other than was uh, you know this you know, truth, justice in the American way? I kept <laughs> that's another thing. I kept fighting for the whole bus. Like, what happened to the American way part of this? <laughs> well, you know, we're sort of moving into a more internationalist thing. Like, really? Uh, okay. <laughs> Can I do a couple of takes just saying it anyway? Oh yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> um, but uh, I think that. Uh, There wasn't much differentiation except in, in tone, tonality. The, the clone evil guy got a little darker. And very straight shooter was very straight shooter. I, I thought that was just the eeriest thing with the clone. Yeah. Every, every, all, uh, every line you delivered as the clone was just creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I do creepy. I can do creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Adam, was in an honor meeting you today. Thank you. That's today. Got your photo ops. You're the man, dude. Thank you, sir. You're the man. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna finish. What's your name? My name is James. James. I'm from Philadelphia now. Right on. Um, I just want to say, like I said, been a fan of you for years. I think you, I wish you had a stronger part in Independence Day. Yeah. Cause you're the man. You're the man. Yeah. You took the first shot at that alien. That was you, brother. Yeah. And you walked through and took me out again. Yeah. But I just wanted to ask, are you going to participate in any strong upcoming uh, sci-fi movies? And uh, I think you're one hell of a tall dude. I think you hit one hell of an awesome looking zombie. Did that ever pop in your head somewhere? I would love to play a zombie. <laughs> I did a crappy Viet, um, crappy vampire movie uh, called The Thirst, for those of you that saw it. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's on Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> you can skip it. <laughs> There's a couple others you can skip too, but um, we won't go there. Yeah, I love, I love to play a zombie. Just, um, <laughs> Independence Day was, uh, my buddy directed it, Dean Devlin. His father produced my bodyguard. Don Devlin. He's the late, great Don Devlin. And Dean and I met when I went to audition for my bodyguard. And he was an actor at the time and a writer. And he had done some acting, but he transitioned into the producing end uh, like his father did because uh, there's more money. <laughs> so he went to that. But uh, he gave me that part in Independence Day, and it was really just a secondary role. So the, uh, the portion where I go and I uh, deliver the coup de grace to the alien was my idea because I thought you know, I was on the set we were shooting it and we got a little behind and they said well we got to move on I said please Dean can we just at least shoot it second second unit and he said yeah 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 go shoot it second unit so uh, the guy Peter Winter who is now uh, one of 
his higher ups at Electric Entertainment, he basically directed that that sequence and made it into the film. So I was glad because I want to go and make sure that that alien is dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's something Major Mitchell would do. So let me do it. Oh, okay. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Good, sir. Right, What's your name? Uh, Chris. Chris. I just want to say, I, you know, probably going to hear this about a thousand times, as you did before, but I love the work you've done. Every every time I see you, whether it's in a movie or whether I see it in a game or in a cartoon, you're always, you've always got such a presence about you, and, uh, you know, even though I love Mass Effect 2, you were probably one of the, as brief as your role was in that game, it was probably one of my favorite performances in the game. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering, how does preparing for a role in, say, a game or a cartoon compared to, or contrast to, getting ready for a role in a live action movie or show? You can do a game in your pajamas. You can show up as <laughs> <laughs> I can you see have, that. You don't have to shave. It doesn't matter. Uh, the, uh, the game work is, is the script is, is uh, very compartmentalized uh, because they're, they're different scenarios and cues. And a lot of the times, if you're doing it, you don't have the lead in line. So the context, that's the biggest stumbling block when you're doing a game, is to figure out what the context of it is, because you don't have a visual uh, of what the action is going to be. So there's a lot of give and take between the actor and the director saying, OK, what's happening in this scene? Am I yelling? Am I not yelling? And how, what's the distance I'm yelling? Now you do that a lot in cartoon work, too, uh, because you don't, you don't get to see the storyboard. Uh, film, you can pretty much visualize it because it's you know, this running narrative of context that you can then play. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> One of the most beautiful babies I've ever seen. <laughs> so happy to. Uh, and a regular regular show, you like you say, you have a whole and you usually get a read through and you get time to prepare. Unless you're doing a guest spot on a TV show where they just send you the script. Okay, you're doing a one off or you're doing a four episode arc. Uh, here's your guy, go. Show up and do it right because we're not going to give, we're going to give you short shrift if you're a guest actor on a show. So, cause they, they really want to serve the, the lead characters, the, the regulars. So, I feel for visiting guest actors on our show. Crew, it's especially important to make sure that the crew gives them the respect that, that they deserve because a lot of times the crew will just run over them because, ah, it's just a guest that I do. But that just, so uh, I find myself saying, why oh, do uh, the guest actors a lot? Did I answer your question? It's yeah. kind of rambling. Okay. <laughs> ramble away. It's I like right. to go on tangents and see where it goes. I ramble all the time. Don't yeah, worry. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Hi. Yes, ma'am. My name is Audrey. Um, I just saw Done the Impossible for the first time. Thank you for that. Pleasure. I feel like you get us brown coats. Thank That's you. nice. Uh, my question is, um, for me, a big part of the appeal of Firefly was the music. I think Greg Edmondson did an amazing job of just setting the mood for each scene. And I'm curious why he didn't score the Serenity film. I think that was just a studio decision. There were some people that didn't get uh, brought on uh, to the film that were on the series that Joss fought for, but it was really a take it or leave it situation. Uh, the, the studio wanted to be, you know, they had their universal contracts uh, as opposed to above my pay grade. Basically. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna, you're going to have to forgive me. I'm a little starstruck right now. What's your name? Uh, Danny. Danny. Where uh, are you from? Just really great. And I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't hear me. Where are you from? Oh, uh, I'm stationed in uh, Fort Lee, Virginia right now. And I'm originally from Tampa. So oh, I'm sorry. God bless. Like I said, starstruck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, first off, I just want to say thank you because you and the crew of Serenity have helped me through some really crappy deployments, especially because I do the most unwanted job in the military. Uh, it's mortuary affairs. Oh, God bless. So, uh, Did you see uh, Taking Chance? Yes, yes. In fact, uh, for our for our job, that is a very heralded, um, very heralded movie. 
it's like we watch that and you know as with any military movie we kind of sit back and it's like we look at the office great timing by the way <laughs> i'm sorry go back go back we, yeah we, well we check out the authenticity of the movie it's like you know hey wait a minute we don't do that we do do that so yeah for those of you that haven't seen taking chance or know what he's talking about taking chance is a beautiful movie starring kevin bacon who is the uh, honor guard? <laughs> <laughs> he, he played seven degrees of Kevin Bacon between you and Kevin Bacon. That, that's why they're I like tangents, but not now. <laughs> He's an honor guard, basically yeah, shepherding, a, shepherding uh, the he plays, a, he plays a lieutenant colonel that is kind of like stuck in the middle of his career and he gets picked as, as usual when uh, uh, sending soldiers and marines and sailors home from uh, Dover. Uh, they just pick at random somebody that comes up on the roster and he gets picked and he's kind of, you know, he's kind of melancholy and kind of stuck in his career. And he's just trying to find what it's all about again. And he gets picked to take this marine home. And it shows him from, you know, getting, getting briefed at Dover to delivering him to the Air Force. And, and through this, he actually finds meaning in what he's doing again. And this is what you do? Yeah, well, no, actually, we're in theater. Uh, okay. And from place of death, we actually are responsible for safeguarding and inventorying of items. And it's, we don't do anything forensic in theater because we're trying to expedite back to Dover as quickly as possible. So. Well, great. Thank you for your service. Yeah. I love the movie, but I wanted to ask you about one of the sexiest ladies on the show that you've ever worked with, Vera. <laughs> I mean, no, no, yeah, maybe, maybe you could explain to me what a, uh, a full bore auto lock thorough gauge is. <laughs> Being a military expert, because you I don't know. That sounds good. <laughs> it sounds sciencey and military. <laughs> so they just handed you the line and said, "Here." It's like also along with the question basically is, it's like did they just hand you? It's like okay, here's the script, here's the weapon, go. And also with your lament that you carry, you know, your sidearm, I'm sure that you carry. Um, did you have any choice in this, or did you know? Did you pick it, or they're like. No, there, there was a little choice with uh, with the sidearm. It just looked cool. Yeah. It's, it's not really high functioning. It's a revolver, you know, pretty much. But it looked cool. The uh, Vera that Callahan or whatever the hell that thing it's is. Basically it's basically it's, 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 it's a cannibal. Yeah, it's a cannibalized AK-47 with different chunky parts put on. And it had been used in some other show. It, might it, was, have been, in, it was in a movie. Was with, it Men in uh, Black? It might have been. No, part no, of it Men wasn't Men in Black. It was uh, uh, the one where Martin Lawrence and Steve Zahn play security guards. Thank you. What's it called? Yeah, National Security. National yeah, okay. Security. Yeah, so they, they borrowed it for that, and uh, I think they added That's a couple good. of little pieces and parts. But it's a clunky weapon. It's got sharp corners, and it's real front heavy. It's very poorly balanced, so <laughs> I thought, well, I should keep it as a collector's item, but they wanted ten grand for it. So. <laughs> I know uh, Nathan got to keep, you know, or well, I don't know if he got to keep, but I think he kept it anyway. <laughs> that, but, you know, there's a photo of him, and it's his holster and everything, you know, sitting off to the side. But it was like, you know, and granted, you know, Vera looks great, along with the other ladies on the show. Don't get me wrong, but I just want to ask you about that, how much input... Miranda's prettier. Just, just my personal opinion. Well, see, I just remember from the, the bonus features, it was like, in River, she's yeah, yeah. doing that, but thank you very much. Appreciate it, coming.